Uh, before you do get started, I just want to make sure everyone wears their mask while they're in here at all times. That's all that I ask. All right. Um, just Good evening. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, tonight I'm doing things a little bit different than I did last week. As for well, not last week, last time that I was here. So what I'm doing this evening is um, start with questions first. I know I have an agenda. I do want to take the time to have the elected official that I'm representing, representing himself as resident of Salt Village to ask questions that they were not able to ask at the last uh, form that I had. So then from there, we can go into, um, I can address any questions that the resident has, and then I'll give you an update of what um, I feel is going on with the finance department and the finance team. So if um, Mrs. Williams or Mrs. Brewer would like to ask questions, please do, and I'll address those questions.
Again, that may or may not be true. I've asked all the trustees, as you know, Trustee Brewer, to last year get to know these ladies individually. So imagine if I came to your house and I felt I ain't like the color of your walls, and all of a sudden I put somebody in place to change the color of your walls, you might feel uncomfortable. So when the trustees got here last year, you recall the first night you guys had ordinances in place were already done. Changing stuff. Mr. Williams came in, was here a day and a half, wanted to change the person's title. Nobody got to know these ladies. My argument was, and still to this day, they are relatively doing the same job that the people that you guys, trustees, believe, the mayor terminate, the mayor force style, whatever the case may be, are doing. It's not like they got a job that wasn't existing prior to any of the trustees getting here. The job titles, I said from what they want, job titles are relevant. I made a point maybe two weeks ago to one of the trustees that we can say somebody's job title that they have in another place is irrelevant to their experience that they have here. So that's undeniable that the atmosphere when you guys came in last April, it felt whether you guys feel the mayor told them that to feel that way or not, that their job was under spiral. It's somewhere has since, since been that way made my comment um, a month ago. Since that time, let's look what happened. I, I've always said it seemed like the finance department has been mainly targeted. If you go back to any minutes, I can promise you out of the two minutes, two, four meetings, let's say four meetings, that's, that's held a month, maybe, if I'm lucky, one department is discussed. But I can guarantee you Every, four, every meeting you have one, the finance department discusses. Now, the auspice is going to be, as you alluded to, there's so much going on that we did not know prior to us being here. Well, that might be true. But at the same time, when you put the emphasis on the staff to correct what was done wrong without acknowledging that the people that were here before them was the cause of most of these problems, that's not fair. Two weeks ago, um, last night, you guys amended um, an ordinance. You amended an ordinance. You amended an ordinance that you put together, the trustee board with the attorney. That even when it came about, that wasn't in place for 63 years. That ordinance was to qualify people to get paid based on the ordinance. Now, back to last year. The finance department, the trustees talked about their salaries. They talked about how many people was in the finance department and all that. So now fast forward to a month ago, a couple weeks ago, you placed an ordinance where conveniently one department here was left out that ordinance. So not only did it delay the budget passing, but it was a haste of making a decision to quote unquote make sure we're properly following the guidelines for the attorney. Conveniently, one department head is left off. It just seemed like to me, conveniently, that same department head is never criticized, never held accountable. So when I say that they, they, my working sister feel like they're under attack, just look at the, what I've done. You may, they're not going to come to you and say, hey, trust me, boy, you don't piss me off. They're not going to do that. They have responsibility at home. But when you get to know people and you understand how they work, you, you know how they feel. So you all can deny it, but if you just sit back and look at what happened, I believe, probably I'm hoping I'm wrong, Mr. Williams was brought, Mr. Williams was brought here to do one task, and that's to change that front office. Because I told every trustee, he sat in that office the four days that he did work, all the time. He didn't interact with none of us, but he wanted to change job titles. Why? There's emails that you guys asked for him to do this. The trustees pounded him, which is one of the reasons he's no longer here, to force him to come back to work during COVID because you guys said the public work guys are working. Well, we can discuss that issue too, whether that's a true, true statement if the public work guys were working during COVID. So I do believe it's hostile more so. Um, Mr. Jerry, since he's been here, he demanded. 
I think he feels he's a king of the hill. Me and him do not get along because like he feels he's king of the hill, I'm king of the hill too. So we can have our disagreement and if he want to have a power struggle because he has a title, you know, it makes me no different. Right is right. And I think most of the time the way he approach the staff and do things is because he feels he has authority. And I think his authorities, his authority comes from the trustees. Okay, well, let me make something clear. I did not put that ordinance together. I knew about it, but I did not put it together. But that's, okay. that's, well, wait a minute, go ahead. Mr. Finch, I didn't interrupt you. You're right. So I did not put that ordinance together, but I had knowledge of it. And as you talk through the uh, your uh, narrative right there, uh, you didn't answer my question. I'm talking about specifically for me. I know what you're saying when the trustees came in in 2019. Oh, okay. So I'm talking about me specifically. Okay. Because, wait a minute, Mr. Okay. Finch, now, I always approach whoever I'm talking to in a, you know, respectful tone. I don't think I have ever got loud or anything with any of them, any of the employees there. And the uh, um, only thing I ever ask them to do something, they say, oh, no, you can't do it. I just go on to something else. I have never, uh, you know, uh, said anything out of the way or anything like that. So, I mean, I, I just felt like me personally, if I, you know, even though I'm a trustee, I don't think I have, and, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. So, I mean, I, I just like to know one incident that I've had, had with an employee that I got out of. Uh, well, let me just, I, don't, I think you're mixing putting pressure and being disrespectful. I don't think you've ever been disrespectful. I agree with you on that. But if we are telling you, for instance, the TIF account, we don't have information, and we tell you that repeatedly, we look for it, and you come out here and you tell the residents that we're not giving you information, then basically you're saying we're lying. And you have repeatedly done that since last year. So that's an example. When we are telling you trust and grow, we're looking for information. We can't find the information. Like I give you an example. The auditors asked for information for 2017 that we were looking for. For who? The, uh, the auditors. They were asking for information regarding the vendor. That was for 2017. When we first looked for it, we couldn't find it. You know where we found it? In the 2018 files. It didn't mean that we didn't look for it. It just took us an extra week to find it. So when we're telling you trust and grow, we can't find information. But you come out here and you tell the residents, we're not getting information. And you apply that the mayor telling us not getting information. And I, and I told you this, I take offense to it. Because I don't know I've given you three, four hundred sheets of paper. So, yes, it's not a disrespectful thing. They're not going to disrespect you because, one, I think they've been raised better than that, and two, you are an elected official, so you deserve the right to be respected. It's just a constant pressure. It's just a, like the instant. I'm going to go back to Mr. Hurricane. When you demand to give you something, you don't demand. You should ask. And if there's a disagreement, don't throw your weight around and think because you have a title, I'm supposed to do something. I'm not that type of person. Some of the ladies probably go ahead and say, let me find it, let me give it to you, if they have it. But if they don't have it, they don't have it. Okay. And you constantly ask the same question day after day, week after week, and get up here and tell the residents, we're not giving information. That's a, that's a way of harassing them. Instead of trusting that, they are not trying to hide stuff from you. So that's about as specific as I can get. Okay, well, Mr. Mr. Finch, I disagree with you on the way that's been handled. Because once I once they say no, I just go on, you know, so I, I don't understand big pressure. Now when I do come out and talk to the public and stuff, yes, I'm gonna say I'm not getting that information because I'm not getting that information. One of the issues here so is you know, your question. What, 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 no, 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 I'm talking, no, I'm making my point, you know. Make your point. One of the no, no. issues here in the village since 2017 is that we haven't had transparency, okay? You can't get anything from any, well, I shouldn't say anything, you get stuff now, you know, documents now. When we first came forward, you couldn't get anything. Now, my prime example is uh, Republican garbage. When I first came on board, I did a nice little spreadsheet. It was presented to the board, you know, uh, and, and uh, the, the problem was the $389,000 that was, you know, we, we did with the contract, you know. So uh, the uh, 
village administrator who was here before, JW, pull all these documents out and, uh, you know, and I said, well, okay, let me take a look at them. Okay, so at that point, I had to call Ernie Lopez from Republic and he said, okay, I had to need to talk to the mayor. So I talked to the mayor. The mayor came back with some numbers. I said, this is not my right, Mary. I need some information so I can make an informed decision. Okay, so we did the spreadsheet and all that sort of stuff. And then, then we find out, the mayor said, well, we're just not going to do it. Now, I spent almost three weeks on that spreadsheet. And I do believe that uh, the $389,000, we don't owe because that's just my opinion of what I got from bits and pieces of it. But uh, the whole thing was a fiasco from the day one. You know, somebody else should have looked into that. And I was trying to, but, you know, I was stuck. So, I mean, how do you think a, a person feels when I'm going out of my way to do this sort of stuff, and then all of a sudden they say, oh, you can't do it. You can't, you can't get that information. And the information is there. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, telling me where I can go and look. So what you just said is the problem I have. You said it was under the previous administration, the previous village administrator. The inf information. The Republican. Yeah. I know that I met with Ernie when I first got here. I know, and I told some of the trustees, that Ernie said, um, we haven't done an audit in a while. That information was provided to you. Now, to, who? to you. No. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay, I'm going to show you the email that I got from Ernie mm -hmm. when he met with me in that office back there. Mm -hmm. If the mayor stopped you, it would you a little uh, alleged. That has nothing to do with the staff. If I met with Ernie to find out how many houses were audited, and basically they only audit after the village audits, which takes time for the village to send somebody out there to audit these homes. So the public is not going to go out there because the village said, hey, go audit these mm -hmm. houses. They only do it when we have done it, and then they confirm our numbers to their numbers. That process was done last year. So, that's my point. If I'm giving you or giving that to trustees to say this is what I'm researching, I've done it, then it's not fair to stand up here and say what you just said. You're not getting information from the public. But you, nobody has given me any information from but, the public. But trust the board. We can't do what happened in 17, 18, 18, not early 19. I'm, I'm talking about 2017. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not here in 2017. Well, trust well, the these ladies not here in 2017. Well, so I, you can't, you can't, when you talk to the resident, what you're not getting, the resident automatically assume you talk about the current staff. You need to preference and say, under um, whoever was the village administrator then, under whoever was the council table then, under whoever was the village uh, finance director then. But when you don't preference it, by saying the former staff, it's implied that you are talking about the current staff. Okay, That's what I'm saying. I so, guess we got the same problem because you, you implied trustees instead of no, specific no, I, trustees. I to you say now, trustees. No, let me clarify you that. say trustees. Let me, let me clarify that. That's why I'm going to different, different this, this time. Okay. I would try to be respectful mm -hmm. to not put individual trustees' name out there. But if they ask me and they want me to address like you just did, I would address individual trustees. Because like I said last time, what I, 80, 90% of what I said last meeting, you all collectively, from the mayor to the clerk, have heard 80% of what I said. So it wasn't nothing new. Now what surprised me is what the trustees felt like, well, I'm not part of the group. But when you look at the minutes, you guys vote as a group. So if you disagree with something, then you should not vote as a group. I mean, you should not vote with the majority. Now, as far as the ordinance that you said you're not part of, Right. Traffic. Okay. No. If you're not part of the ordinance drafting, uh -huh. what was your vote on it? Don't I voted for it, yes. So you voted on something that you felt, or maybe I'm, let me ask this question. Did you feel it included, excluded a member who should be part of the ordinance so that that person get paid a paycheck? Say that again. Did you feel that ordinance excluded a department head that, sh that should get paid based on appropriation? No, because it's coming up. We, we voted well, for as, yesterday. Well, as the clerk alluded to yesterday, you know what that means? You pay an attorney more money to amend an ordinance that was initially started by either the attorney or a trustee. All I'm saying, if it was wrong, it should be tabled, or it should never be brought to, brought to vote, because as everybody knows, we had an issue with the budget passing. That was the last thing that my understanding that you said at the committee meeting, 
we wasn't going forward with the budget until these ordinances passed. So you're, you're saying you weren't part of the original ordinance, but it was your voice. Wait, wait. I said we can't move forward unless we get an ordinance for those that was, that that was, positions now, that was created. That was, That's what okay. I said. So let me ask you this. Are you willing to say what trustee put that ordinance together? No. So why do you want me to say what trustee I'm talking about? Because I'm talking about See, me specifically what happened with me and you. You know, you this know, between me and you. That, right. So not, well, it's not really between me and you. It's, no, it's that I, it, I was trying to say that. But we, just like anyway, because we wasting people's time. Maybe I'm just saying. I'm gonna them okay. Just like you just said, mm -hmm. I made an uh, inclusive comment about all the trustees and you and the individual. Right. So and if, I'm you, if, you you feel, if, you if you disagree, with, I mean you feel that way, then you should be part of the trustees that put forth an ordinance that excluded a department that, in my opinion, never get chastised, never get corrected. Because another thing, I'm gonna, and then I'll go on to the next question. One of the things collectively the trustees have talked about was cross-training. Cross-training. I did something today because I want to do an experiment. I asked my public works guys, I said, if I gave y'all 127 houses to turn off, how many of y'all would cut off? They said 127 unless they got to dig up. I said, okay, if I give y'all six days, how many y'all can turn off? They said, hell, we'll do that in one day. So when I talk about public works department, it ain't about the man. It's about one breath, you guys say, cross-trained front staff, but yet public work can't be cross-trained, police department cross-trained, fire department cross-trained. So that's what, so when you talk about why I defend the ladies in the front office, because it's, it's no, no, different no. rules for different people. No, 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 no. I, I am not, Mr. Okay. Fisher, I am not taking that. I'm asking you personally, how, how, why did you say that? I, I was giving them a hard time, and I'm not giving the employees a hard time. You give them hard time because you keep referencing what you have not gotten prior to these ladies and myself being hired. Oh, so since I'm a trustee, I'm not supposed to ask financial questions. No, you can ask financial questions, trustee, but when you come out here and you tell the residents you're not getting information. I'm not. When, Okay. Okay. Well, see. Have I, have, I, have I not given you the bank statements you asked for? Yeah, you gave okay. me the bank statements. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Let me, let me, there are so many other things back there. Let's that let's I we're, we're only one person. Mm. We're only, I'm only one person. Okay. But my question is, why would you give this for Mohan? Why would you give this for Mike Barnicki? Why would you give, give this information for John Furman? That's three people. You give information for one person, and you still are not satisfied. But yet, you sit out here every other Tuesday. But if I go back to 2017, 2018, you're not saying the same stuff. Why not? Because we were getting it. You still have a voice. You still have a mouth. And I was still saying the same thing I'm saying okay. now. We weren't getting that. Next question, face. please. We ain't going nowhere with this. Yeah, I know we're not getting no, anywhere. Because you don't want to admit that you put more emphasis. Okay, you know, you said you're not getting information. February 2019, you asked me about fire hazards. Have you gotten a list and an address for those fire hazards? Yes. When did you get them? I got them. When? I don't know. I've been having them a while. How, how long ago was Trusty Brewer? I really can't. It wasn't in 2000, it was not in 2018? I got seven, somewhere like July. Of uh, this year, correct? Um, this Sometime this year? Would you agree with that? Well, yeah, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever sat right there mm -hmm. and told the residents you still waiting on fire hydrant information? Yes. I have. Okay. Let's look at the minutes. Next question. Anybody else got a question? Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Williams. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to let the audience know what the new ground work rules are, because last time the trustees were told they could not talk. Does anybody object to me taking my mic off, so you can, my mask off, so you can hear me? Linda, you okay with that? Okay. Okay, so... Um, so, last time, the rules stated at the beginning that the trustees are present, but they cannot speak. We found that that's not true, that the trustees can speak. But unfortunately, everything that Trustee Brewer just talked about, now I cannot comment on, because we cannot no, answer no, the no, same no, question. Let me trust I mean, Ms. Williams, I don't want to do no technicality. I want this meeting to be open. So you well, you do, but according to the Open Meetings Act, well, me, I have to follow well, the Open me Meetings Act. I don't know if the attorney was right on it. Again, this is that gray area. It's not an open meeting act violation if two trustees talk, but it's an open meeting act violation if, two, if you rebuttal what a trustee said. That, that kind of confused me. And I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong. But if you 
If, the, if one trustee can talk, the other trustee can talk, but they can't talk about the same issue, that's a violation. So what I did now, that's obviously enough. what I did, because it was a big issue last time, like you just said, you guys weren't able to talk. I asked the clerk to send out all the trustees an email asking them to bring her questions that I have not seen, because the trustee said this was orchestrated, this was for the mayor and all that stuff, and it was not. I have my voice in my own voice. I've said when I first got here so many times, and I don't know what it takes for people to believe that I can speak for myself. I'm 51 years old and I don't need some mouthpiece. So, if you feel as trustee that you have a question or you want to piggyback on what somebody else said, let's just put it out there. Because I don't want going back next week, somebody say, well, I didn't answer the question, or Mr. Fitz kind of gave half truth. Put it out there. This is for the residents. Let them see. I understand that, but I still have to go according to the guidelines, as well, closely as I can. Do me a favor, ask Ms. Couch or Ms. Washington to speak to write your question. No, I have very, very basic uh, comments to make. I just wanted to say, as much as I would um, actually chime into a lot of what has already been said, I can keep it very broad, okay? So last time, um, I will state, as far as you bringing up staff, past and present, I think it's inappropriate. We're naming names. And I'm one of them that speaks, and I don't mean executive session, but an open session, that while we're discussing our staff, we shouldn't be naming names, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. You can name their position, but you shouldn't be putting names out there, Mr. Finch. That's not appropriate. And um, basically, I mean, our staff could have a problem with that. I do care about our staff's feelings, whether it's staff that you particularly like or staff that you particularly don't like. We have to respect our staff. So that kind of worries me that we're putting their names out in the way that we're doing. And the one thing that I will agree with is trustees should not be lumped together. Absolutely. And in the last meeting, we were. There were several statements that were made that I didn't have anything to do with or any party to and basically didn't agree to. But I was lumped together with other trustees who felt that way or did something. And I felt that that was inappropriate. It gives the public the wrong perception. I think the talk with the treasurer should be just that. Talk about finances. And what we had, a, you had a great presentation the last time you stuck to the finances. You gave us a lot of information, some of which I didn't even know, because I haven't been around for a couple of years at one point. And you gave me information I didn't even know. And it was great. What happened was when it got turned over to the residents, and then it became like attacking. And I don't think we should be here to attack anybody. Not the staff, not the trustees, not you or not anybody. Because I personally have a very good working relationship with you and the staff. And I don't know why we're going here. We're wasting our time. I want to hear about the finances of the village. I don't want to hear where, where everybody's against, we're working against each other. I want to see how we can work together with our finances. Because my question is, talking to treasurer should be about finances. Why are we speaking about personnel, past or present? This should be done in an executive session. It shouldn't be done out like this. The staff should not be addressed in public. My concern is, how long does the typical audit take? When do you anticipate the forensic audit and the regular audit to be completed? What is keeping it from being completed? One thing I was told was that the bank statements from 2017 have not been turned over to the auditors. My question is, I know you just stated something about records not being placed where they're supposed to be, but bank records can be received from the bank. So basically, my only concern, I have financial questions. I'm not here to talk about anybody. Because when it comes to you and I, we've always had a wonderful working relationship. Can we talk about finances here tonight and stop attacking each other? So my biggest question is the audit. The, budget, the budget's done. Okay, anything in the past is in the past. What can we do to move forward, especially with the finances? Because as I stated before, we have a finance director, assistant finance director, and an interim finance director. I want to know where do we stand with our finances. Thank you. Good question. So um, to answer your question, I'm going to answer your question. But you said something that I'm trying to explain to trust um, This is what um, we're wrong perception. So when you talk about the staff, whatever, that's my whole point. The wrong perception has given when the finance department is repeatedly mentioned is the perception that it's occurring. Now, with respect to the audit, it normally takes three to four months. The forensic audit, the 2017 bank statement you mentioned, I think maybe the third or the fourth of this month is what SICK provided to us. 
which was a new request. Um, we have not, well, let me say, I, I don't think we have provided that to them since that time. Um, but they should be in the drawer in one of the cabinets in there. So that was a new request. As far as the regular Miller Cooper audit, we just got off a call with them, um, I want to say Tuesday, if not Monday. The anticipation is to follow back up with them by the end of November because there is some um, unexplained transaction within Civic that myself, the auditors, and now the finance director is trying to figure out what the heck happened. Um, that's one of the things that I think when we say stuff like that, people, because of the, the toxicity that we have, that we're delaying, we, we meeting the staff. But I try to explain that we're not delaying because if you go back and look at the previous audit, you see that the auditors made over 125, 130 journal entries to get the audit done. So we can't move forward with Miller Cooper until we figure out what's going on with Civic as it relates to the main cash account because everything is predicated on the cash account. Once that is done, then Civic is going to come in. Miller Cooper is going to come in and do what they call spot check. They're going to randomly pick invoices. Um, they're going to call these individuals and ask them what's going on. Did, did you actually deliver this to the business and things of that nature? We won't know what those invoices are going to be until they come in. One of the delays, which is a minor delay, but it's, it's still a delay, is because of COVID. They have not been here. Um, the guy who does the audit for Miller Cooper, he's only been here <coughs> once um, for one day to kind of um, go through some um, information. As for civics, they are working behind the scene. They did send us an um, update. I was hoping you, the trustee received that because it was, it was addressed to myself as well as the village administrator and I think um, the finance director. They are doing what they have to do behind the scene. They are scheduled a meeting to be with the mayor and the staff. They gonna pick that date. That's gonna be a date that we're not gonna be able to control because the whole purpose of the first audit is kind of catch you off guard so that quote unquote nobody to at the last minute hide stuff. So I can't tell you when that's done. But we are talking the, the biggest challenge is the real couple the, the friends I is moving forward behind the scenes. So you just mentioned that um, I believe you said like 120 something entries that have to be done on the audit. This is traditionally what's been happening over the past several years. Yes. Multiple years. Not this year, not just last year, multiple years. And again, the auditors keep telling us, we keep repeating the same bad behavior. When are we going to stop repeating the same bad behavior year after year? Is Civic part of the problem? Is this what I'm, is this what I'm hearing? It's our software? Or what is the problem? Why do we keep repeating the same errors year after year after year? Well, it's, it's twofold. One, and, and I've said this before, I, I do think it's Civic. The other, I think, is it's a mom work. We have 30 plus bank statements. So you figure 30 bank statements a month, even if you get them done in a month, which is, you have to have somebody just truly dedicated to that. Because the corporate bank statement in itself takes a few days because it's got so much going on. One of the things that is interesting to ask that, I had the staff watch um, a webinar the other day. Hopefully, we'll have the company come out here in about another two weeks to do a presentation. It's a um, window based. Platform. I do know they have it for the utility building. I think they have it for the um, accounting side of it. I just don't know how much it's going to cost because I'm not going to suggest something to the village if they say it's $50,000 because we, then we have to go through the whole thing with the budget. But that is something we did look into just recently with um, the staff and the webinar. The challenge is, and I think um, she can speak for herself. With the new finance director here, there's a lot of um, process and procedures that has to put in place. Yes. And she's going through that task now, which indirectly is hurting us in the sense with the audit because it's so, as I said before, there's so much coming in daily, whether it's dealing with the client, the residents, their issues in the water building, whether it's dealing with vendors to make sure they get paid right, whether it's, it's um, looking at invoices. It's a lot of internal stuff that we have to do. So now I think that the team is kind of settled. It's slowly going to start getting better, but it's not going to happen overnight. Because as I mentioned maybe last month, once this audit is done, we right back into the new audit. Yeah. So it's going to take some time. It's going to take the staff putting in some effort. 
which and and I don't know if you collect me. Um, the best way to get people to work for you and do more is when they feel like you respect them. Mm -hmm. When you feel like you value their efforts and their time. The amount of work that has to be done in the finance department is going to require extra effort, effort time. That's hard to get right now, to be honest with you. Um, that's what has to change. You have to have people willing to stay a little bit later, come in on weekends if they need to, to get the job done. But if you're not feeling like that, it's, it's hard to go above and beyond. Well, I've seen multiple staff members here after 5 o'clock because that's typically when I can't get there is after 5 o'clock. And I do applaud their extra effort. And I do tell them when I come in after 5. And I ask them, why are you still here? Because I do applaud the fact that they are putting in that extra effort. But I do know that trustees have an asshole off of their time, including myself. I mean, I'm pretty efficient in the county. I can help out when it's needed. I can file. I can do whatever's needed. I mean, trustees are here to help. Which is exactly why I, I think that the perception is that we're the enemy, but we're not. We were put in a position to try to help move the village forward. And what we need to know is what can we do to help. We don't want the division. We don't want the, the um, separation. All we want to know is what can we do to move forward. What help do you need? And we've asked you time and time again. And I know that the, the, the new finance director came into a situation that she's doing a no man's job. And I appreciate that because I know policies and procedures are extremely lacking in a lot of areas, okay, which is why we put somebody in place that could do that. So my question is, again, can we stay away from the, the hostility factor and the personal factor, and can we deal with the finance situation? Because that's what you're here for. I, I think one of the things you say, uh, the trustees helping, one of the things I know that the finance director is trying to implement is a, a purchase order system. Mm -hmm. That's going to be, one thing I said last year, two things that I know have been working since I was 15. People don't like change, people don't like accountability. When you put that purchase order system in place, it's going to make a lot of people mad. Because mm -hmm. honestly, everyone here in all departments is willing to with the village credit card place. Not, not say credit card, with the village money, let me say that. Mm -hmm. They go buy stuff, and before you know it, now it's on the council payable list. That's how you go over budget, that's how you spend money that you don't have. If the body would um, take the framework that the finance director has and realistically put together, this is how we're going to do a purchase order and hold people accountable, and it doesn't come through the proper way, that invoice is not getting paid. I said before that um, one of the things that I did when I first got to Linwood, I had my department head meeting, and the conversation was, if you do not tell me what you want to order, when that vendor comes with that bill, I'm going to call that vendor and tell them they will not get paid for at least over 90 days. You do that enough, vendors are going to want to stop delivering stuff to you, or that department here who needs that, whatever sure. you order, is going to get shaped up and get it done right. Those are the things that can be done, and it's a culture change. So if the body wants to help, take some of the pressure off finance group and say, hey, what do you envision ABCD as the purchase order system? How does it flow? And then we're going to enforce it so that when you come to us and say, somebody calls us, hey, I ain't got paid, then your question as trustees is be, and the mayor should be, did you follow the process? And the answer is no, well, you won't be paid until you start following the process. I know you mentioned the purchase order process a year ago, if not longer, when I first came on board, we were talking about it. And it didn't get implemented then. I'm all for it. And I told you that it was. It's accountability. And like I said, people want change, but they don't want to change. I think it's a great thing, and I think it's really going to help. So again, anything that the trustees can do to help implement procedures or move things forward to get the finances where they need to be. Again, I'm not lumping the trustees together because I'm only one. I personally would say I know at least one trustee that's willing to help where needed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to add on that. We're working on that, on the purchase order already. And that's our thing. I'm not asking in an announcement for the finance for, for you guys to draft it. That draft the purchase order anything. What I'm, what I'm asking <coughs> is, as she implements it, 
and we have discussion. It, I, I think a lot of conversations should be had back here in there before it's come to committee meetings or council meetings mm -hmm. and have a conversation as adults to approve the process. So I'm not asking you to draft it or put it together. I'm asking let her lead and then help modify it because what, what I put out tonight was to you, you just said it on this way, was the odd findings. Let her lead and say, okay, this is what we're going to do to correct this issue. Mm -hmm. and, and collectively support that, knowing that there's going to be some resistance. I don't need a mic to answer that. I totally agree, and I thought that's what she was doing. I support that 110%. That's what she was put in place to do. I'm not a finance director. Mm -hmm. I think she'll, she'd be able to do that and bring it to the board would be excellent. Yeah. That's I can probably speak loud. Okay. No, we'll get I just had a question. You had mentioned that Civic. Now, didn't you bring them in? You had recommended them at a board meeting. Is there a problem with them not doing some of the things that are required of no. that particular? The, the Civic, no, I'm sorry. Civic, Civic. is the forensic audit. Civic is the accounting system that we have. Civic has a lot of nuances. Like, like I'm an Android type person. You give me an uh, Apple phone, it's going to take me a minute to figure it out, but it's going to take me a long, lot longer to be going to Android. Civic is like that. You, switch, you have a system that is so many steps and process you have to go through to get, to get the information out that you're trying to look for. Like a lot of the accounting systems that I'm used to, if someone says, print out me a balance sheet. I can go click on a few buttons and boom, I got it. In Civic, you practically have to build it. And if you are not first in all the nuances of what a balance sheet entail, you may or may not pull out all the information that you need. So when you get a report, by looking at it, you're like, no, this is wrong. So now you gotta go back and take the time to figure it out. Like, we do um, the budget of action. There's a system that if I do a budget of action, it gives me all the department head, one report, one budget. In civic, you have to do every single department. Now, if the board wants to see what's the total um, collectively like they do in the budget, you have to add them up individually. That's common Some of the things that you said they are trying to gather for the audit, the forensic and the regular, is there stuff missing that is lacking or you don't know where it's filed or whatever? Well, some one of them was the invoice that we just found, invoice that they asked for we just found. Most of this is time. It, it really is. It's, there's like the week of shutoff is swamped in here. The week of penalties is um, uh, due dates is swamped in here. So there's a lot of calls, a lot of activity. It's, it's, every day is not the same. So you can have the good intention to do something like this. Some morning when I get to limbo at 8 30, I might not let me sit at my desk at like 12, 12 30 because I'm running around putting up small fires. That throws my whole plan of action for that day off. So it goes back to the time that it takes, and then do you really feel like maybe I should stay at 5 30, maybe I should stay at 6, and do that extra 30 minute, that extra hour to <coughs> get what needs to be done? That's, that's a move, that's, that's, that's a, um, a desire. But if you're not feeling, as um, I was taught, if you're not feeling that love being reciprocated, you like, hey, it's eight o'clock. Clock, I'm off. The, eight hours later, I'm off the clock, and that's that's what's unfortunate. You keep mentioning this. If you don't feel appreciated, <coughs> if a person's here to do a job, everybody has to feel appreciated. But if they don't feel appreciated, do they <coughs> talk to the individuals that they feel that they're not being appreciated? And if you're hired to do a job and you get paid for that job, you should do that job. I agree. And if you're not doing that job, somebody from somewhere needs to sit down and say, okay, we're not getting the job done. For instance, I remember you mentioning all these bank accounts, 18 different bank accounts, I believe it was. 30. Right, how many? 30. Okay. How many of those have you compacted or straightened out, found out why or whatever? It, and where's that money supposed we were, to be? We was originally, I think, at 33. We're down to 30. Um, so they, they eventually will shrink. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, the report I gave last night, there's a money laundry account, there's a spending money laundry account, 
There's a holding money account to your account. There's a toll account. All those funds are restricted. I have to wait until I get information from the chief and the respective agencies to say we can consolidate this money. Like this, the MFT account, that account will never ever be closed because it's restricted. The DA account will never be closed. <coughs> but we might be able to close a money laundry, one of the three money laundry accounts. But the question is, will that be in violation of the state? Because basically what the money is, they make a drug bust or whatever, they put in this account, and once upon, at one time they have to send it to the state. The state either give it back to the individual, if they don't give it back to the individual, they keep a percentage of it, they, they get a percentage of it, and then they send the percentage to the village. So those are the questions that has to eventually be asked, and somebody has to follow up. So just because I'm asking the chief to look into it, now he has to follow up the state when he has time, Well, I have to follow up the state. So originally these accounts will get closed, most, some of them will get closed, but it's a process to make sure you're not closing accounts that's not um, um, going to get you in trouble in the long run. Like, for example, the CN Railroad account that um, Trusted yeah, I see, not to talk about. Trusted Brewer mentioned, now that we have permission from CN, CN Railroad to use that money unrestricted, that money is now available to be used. So that's an account that we can take that money, in theory, and put it all in the, the corporate account and close the CN Railroad account completely. But we probably not going to do that because if we put it in the corporate cash account, it's going to be spent. And then uh, six months down the road, we're going to look up and like, what happened to the whole money? Uh -huh. So that that money probably just be slowly dwindling out of the CN account, and then once it's depleted, close that account for good. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Are you done? Can yeah. you explain, uh, <laughs> sir, why it hasn't well, why has it taken so long for the trustees to pass the budget? When this year started back in May. Let, let me say this, because I, I don't want her, this to be trustee bashing or merit bashing. Once we get the process down, it shouldn't take that long. Again, I just think there's different philosophy, philosophies on what should go in the budget, what shouldn't go in the budget, and what's the priority. That's one of the things that I think if you hold your financial director, hold your treasurer accountable, and say, we want a budget by June, this is realistically July, or July 30th. Let them do it, let them meet with the department heads, let them go all, the, all over the intricacies of the numbers and present it to the body without the body picking line by line, but with a discussion. That could get the budget done by July. It has not happened in the last two years because Every collective person involved with the budget have their different needs and wants. Instead of saying, if you guys recall last year, I said, you only got 13 million. I don't care if you, you won't spend 20 million, you ain't got you can't spend 20 million if you only get 13 million. So it's almost a new point to just say, give me everything you guys want. It's more of you got 13 million, based on what you spent last year, we need to we're gonna increase it, or more likely we're gonna decrease it. And then, if there's anything left over, based on what the analysis is done by the financial director, we can bump it up a little bit. If the financial director can't make that analysis, then there's really nothing to talk about. Because the money is what it is. It's only coming from the state and the county, and then what's coming through the front window. But that's gauge prior year. So that can be just one of the process and procedure. This is what we're going to do. And we tried, I'll be honest with you, we tried that this year. It kind of got off track with the COVID and everything. So, it was just a matter of everyone here had different inputs on what we should change, what we should take out, what we should add. And that delays because we're not meeting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're meeting on Saturday. And then we may be two Saturdays later before you know the whole month's gone by. Well, has the budget been passed yet? Yeah, the budget's passed. The budget's done. Um, I have to give the uh, layout of the budget to the clerk so that she can follow up with the county. But it has been passed. And it's on the website. Okay. Have we implemented anything on the budget? Which you mean? Which well, I mean, <coughs> I'm assuming that once the budget is passed, then money should be released to do yeah. things. Okay. Mon money did, um, I don't think you was here yesterday evening, uh, money has been released. The union contract that was just recently also approved 
we, we need new back, uh, retro pays, so money has to be released. And bills have, even when the budget was not passed, we have a stopgap measure that allow us to continue paying certain bills that the mayor and the board deem necessary. So we have, uh, like for instance, we wasn't going to stop payroll. That, that wasn't going to stop because the budget didn't get passed on a certain time. So, uh, you, you, you're talking about the, uh, uh, the union, or mm -hmm. are you talking about the union that's responsible for the, the repairs and the replacement of the fire hydrants? Yeah, all unions, um, we did it. Public Works Union and the Office Tech Technology Union, they both got all their retros. We did the police retro, I want to say early January of this year. Okay, so I'm getting to a bottom line. The bottom line is this. Are we certain as to how many fire hydrants, do we have any idea as to how many fire hydrants are going to be repaired or replaced between now and, and the next question? May 1st. The proposal that I know that was discussed, I want to say 17. I get an amen on that for me as well, Mr. Finch. <laughs> you would also love Thank you, Mr. Finch. And that's what we have in mind for going forward. Yes, absolutely. Any other questions? No, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, yes. I'm listening to you talking about the accounting system. How old is the current accounting system that we have? Do you know how old it is? Does it go back 63 years? I don't know how far back it goes, but it is an old accounting system. It's an old accounting system. Yes. So if we as a village don't come up to the 21st century, you're going to have this problem consistently, no matter whose administration is in. Correct? Yes. Okay. Question for you, number two. How many repeat findings have you had in audits going back to God knows how long because of this old accounting system? Well, um, at least four pages of uh, county findings. Yes. Now, let, let me not put everything on civil and definitely not on all personnel. I said it before, the government accounting is not like any other accounting that you deal with. Because there's so many nuances. There's fund balances, there's enterprise fund, um, fiduciary funds, and all those. It's a, a knowledge base that you need, and also it's a ton of work that's involved. I think one of the things, and kind of go back to Mr. Williams, is the staff is going to need support, and that support can come in the form of additional people helping. That's the, the money wasn't a big sticking point. I, that's what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Get a team in, 
have expectation, set goal, and your benchmark. When you do that with talent and knowledgeable people, it's going to change. The stuff we do here as accountants is not hard. It's just tiresome. It's just detail-oriented, and it's a mountain of work. That's the biggest problem I've seen from now, from here in the past. That regardless of what you're saying, the system stays the same. That's the problem. The financial director, I think the one we have now, is very um, sharp mentally. It takes more than that and to get things correct. So, if anything, that's what I would recommend. Put efforts and energy into the finance department and have an expectation. Like, and I'll give you an example. Um, I bragged last time about the $1.2 million in the waterfront. Mm -hmm. I challenged the finance team to get to $1.5. And all that, and that's not, that's not, they can go out and find $300,000, but they put, continue to put process in place to shut off water, collect fines, write permits, and tickets, and all that stuff. The money's going to be there. So it's, it's those little things that you can do, but it takes collaborative work as a group to do it together. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I am a lady, so I will go. First of all, I want to thank you for having this meeting again on tonight. Just a couple of brief things I want to mention about that have to do with finances. The accounts payable used to be on the back table during the meeting, and the residents could actually see the bills that were being paid and could have some input about we are hearing what you're saying, and they keep saying go to the website and you can see what's going on, but realistically there are a lot of residents that don't have a computer. There are a lot of seniors that don't know how to navigate to go find a web page for a municipality and look up the budget and see what's going on. What would it take for us to be able to get the accounts payable back on the back table again so that the residents can have a hard copy to review? Actually, I thought, um, let me back. When I first got here, it was my decision to pull it. I, I, I will say that I was not the mayor of the trustees. And the reason I, I decided to pull it was because you had items on the accounts payable, and then you had invoices that wasn't getting paid. I'm an advocate believer that if it's on that accounts payable, that bill got to get paid. Regardless of personal feelings, who, what, when, where, regardless, it has to be paid. Okay, so we can still see it. I mean, since you're going to make that determination, well, well, that you're going to pay it anyway. I'm just saying some people don't know what's going on. So when they say it's no transparency, sometimes it is transparent to some people, but not transparent to other people. Well, I thought I, I did the recently, maybe like eight months ago, that the mayor put it back on the table because that's what I heard that it was at one point in time it was on the table. So it go back on the table. But the other thing, let me tell you why we also. If you recall the original accounts payable, things are all over the place on accounts payable. We've revised that numerous times to get it where it's based on the department. So you can look at one particular department and say, okay, I see these bills for administration, I see these bills for fire, so okay. in more detail. So it can go back out there. I have no problem with that. But we were revising it because I didn't want it to be a situation where there's a bill on there. Because I'll give you an One of the bills, we were paying imports, and the way it used to be coded in the system, let's say it was $10,000. We would pay that bill, it'd be all over on the accounts payable list. So when you see that as a resident, you're like, you're like oh, I just pay, we just paid so-and-so $1,000. But in total, you pay that person $10,000. So the way we have it set up now, you see that one bill for what it was, $10,000. So okay, thank you. Thank you. And then my other uh, statement that I wanted to talk about was immediate checks because we don't see the account payable. Have there been immediate checks being written? Because that was a big issue that immediate checks should not be written. No, the way, it is not on my watch, let me say. The way that works, if a check needs to go out for a video, let's say um, um, you need new tires, um, the email's supposed to come in or whatever. I would send an email out to the board collectively and get a consensus from the body to say, hey, we need to pay this invoice for this particular reason. Once we got four of the six trustees approving it, then a check would be issued. The mayor and the village clerk would sign off on that check with the email as supporting documentation that the board knew that this check was going to be cut. 
How often does that happen? Very seldom. Well, that's a good thing. Because one thing we instituted was they get a council uh, an agent report prior, which shows what invoices. Probably 95% of invoices that we have in the house will be on an agent report before we actually do accounts payable list. So that's one. Two, we have that um, accordion file with all the invoices that we are about to pay. So that is this. So it has to be an emergency. It's not like we're going to call, we're going to cut a check if somebody buy some paper or some pens. It would be something that, I don't know, water main break or trans, I don't know, I would say transmission, even that could wait a couple of days. So it, it would quote unquote be an emergency. Or somebody went, got a conference tomorrow, and we've got to cut a check. So it, it, it would be very seldom that it happens. And it's usually like under $1,000, like around? Yes. You have a cap that you won't go over like now. Now, now the other thing, let me say this too, as far as accountability. Every check you cut out of that system, you can run a check register report. So that's something we have provided to the trustees and the mayor. So, and it's in sequence. So if you go from check one to 50, and you look, and you're like, wait, check 47, I don't remember this vendor, it's gonna stick out. Because all those checks have to be cut through the system. Now, the other side of it, let's say, because we have access to it, a manual check where we don't run it through the system and we just type, type it up. It has to be typed up and it has to have two signatures. If one signature is signed, the bank can kick it back. That's one way of checking. The oh, check for um, indiscretion. The other way that's gonna be checked, when the finance director, who has no access to the checks, who has no signature put on the checks um, as a signer, when the person does the bank reconciliation, those checks again, because the system is going to say, these are the 10 checks you cut. The bank is going to say, here's 11 checks that was cash. That person, the finance director, will catch the imbalance. That's the second way of checking it. Then the other way of checking it is when the auditors come in, like I said earlier, the cash account is a mining company they care about, because that's what everything flows for. When they go through the, the, each 12 months of bank uh, statements, they had see like this one check was typed up. Remember I said they do spot checking? Mm -hmm. They're going to say, give us proof that the say the mayor signed. Give us proof that the board knew that the mayor signed this check. If that doesn't happen, then they're going to do documentation when they finally give a report that here's a check that we found that was typed with just the mayor's signature on it, or let's say the mayor's public signature on it. But there's no support to say why they did it. So there's three ways that they can something like that. Okay, and then I just have two more quick things. Um, Mr. Finch, I know that you had said that, or I had seen that they had taken $400,000 out of the water account. Has that money been put back? No, ma'am. Are you planning on putting it back? <laughs> um, in South Carolina, that's a double edged sword. I personally do not think that because of how South Carolina's water is not allocated for another entity like Chicago or Hammond, it's profit to the village. I haven't found nothing statue-wise that says you have to pay money back to the water fund. However, however, I do agree that the water fund should not be a trust fund where you just keep abusing it and using it and using it and using it. I do think there should be a plan of how to use this money. So for instance, the 400000 it was put out there, this is what we need this money for because of COVID. Because I had said that back in March, that potentially we're going to be down $45,000, $500,000 by the time the lot rolled around. So that was already known that I potentially would have to go into this waterfront. I think as long as that is explained, you really can't be upset with it because it's, it's for paying the bills of the village. What I think should not happen is we got $1.2 million and then next week it's only 800000 And you guys, you and many residents say, what happened to 400000 And nobody can give you an answer. That's what I don't think is happening. If you say, we spent the 400000 on trees, at least you as residents know what happened to the money. Mm -hmm. So that's why, do I think you should put, put it back? Probably not, because you're going to put it back, you're going to borrow it back again right. down the road. So you just left hand, right hand. Well, I know that when I was a, trust, a trustee, it was, uh, very, very important that if we took $200 out the water fund that we put it back. I mean, it was a, 
question that came up every single meeting. You all borrow money for the water fund and you put it back. So some things that was in past practice now is just like matter of fact. So I'm just asking just for clarity. But after the meeting last night and talking about the safety of the village, you know, COVID is up in South Village. We're over 200 now. And so it's rising in South Village. So I'm just saying that, you know, I wish that you all could put out some kind of a notice to the residents per the marquee or on the water bill, just remind the residents that the coronavirus is not over. There still is not a vaccine and that we want our residents to be safe. I have gone to some stores and they are not wearing a mask. They are not social distancing and I'll talk to the manager and they'll come and they'll speak to the person. Now I know I think over in Indiana, they're not pushing it and a lot of people from Indiana come over here, but I'm concerned about some village residents I know at one time you all did provide and pass out masks and you put it up on the market that people could come on a particular day and the residents were providing masks. So just a note, if you could do that maybe again, since it is rising, we want to keep our residents as safe as possible. Now, I think a lot of people may think, well, masks is only $4.99 at the beauty store. I think they $9.99. If I got five kids, and me and my husband, I mean, I have $70 to buy masks. If you give to me two, that'll help out a lot. You know, if you give all of us two or five. So, and then the, these paper ones, I mean, they don't cost that much. But that's just an idea. But this is what I really want to talk about. And this is my last thing. I talked to the mayor after the meeting last night because I'm really concerned about these street lights and there are blocks where there are no lights. I know the finances, I don't know how much you have to pay to replace the light on the streets every time they go out. But I did talk to uh, Ms. Coella today too. And so a fire hydrant is approximately $6,000 to repair. A brand new fire hydrant is $3,000, approximately another $3,000 for labor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's a lot of money. That's like $6,000 for one fire hydrant. The street lights I heard was even more than that. To change those bulbs and to go up there, <coughs> even to put a new light on a street whether it's an aluminum pole or whether it's a wood pole, it's like almost $8,000 to $15,000. So I had this great idea that we could have light posts in all the residents' front yards. Have you seen those in, in, in My communities? Neighbors. Huh? My neighbors have They are gorgeous and they're not expensive. So what I need you all to discuss, I'm going to bring it up. I need the village to give the residents $25 each on their white clothes for their front yard. I think that would be a remarkable idea because it would not only make the village. How much did you say? $25. <laughs> mm -hmm. Per resident. Excuse me. I'm, I got the link. Okay, the trip trust, I mean. Um, we talked about finance. No, that's not finance. I'm asking a question. But that's still not, I mean, you're talking about a meeting now. We're, 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 we're trying to. We're oh, okay, okay, I got you. No problem. The bottom line is to that, I'll just say this. The residents, at one point, it was echoed. What are we doing for the residents? What are we doing for the residents? I'm talking about lighting up the neighborhoods, lighting up the blocks, putting lights as we can't get the regular street lights up on the aluminum or the, or the wood poles, just a lighted area where seniors can see on their block coming out of their house. But I'll address it another way. But thank you for answering my questions. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you. Larry Sapp. Uh, I was listening and I, I understood, or I think I understood, uh, you to say that the system that we're using is, a, is an old, old system for a county? Yes. Uh, how old is it? Uh, it's it's probably 52 years. So the system, that old and as fast as we're evolving with technology, that puts us like in the stone age. For a county, so that leaves a lot of room and windows of opportunity for money to be misplaced intentionally or unintentionally. It can wind up somewhere it's not supposed to be and not get caught in a matter of time that we're set straight. I'm saying that because we're, the business is under uh, forensic audit. Now, I know we have uh, audits which is supposed to manage our budget, make sure every time is where it's supposed to be. Now, when we go into a forensic audit, somebody has questioned 
whether money was appropriately spent or money was taken out, they don't know where it is, so a forensic audit was called in. Now, I also understand that this audit only goes back to for two years. Is that correct, sir? One. One year? And we have a system that's been outdated for 15 years. Why are we only going back one year to try to straighten out something that we probably need to go back to for 15 years or more to bring ourselves up to date? Well, um, that was a decision collectively that was made to just do one, one year of forensic audit. Two, it could get costly, it would be more than one year. And then, why we don't go back further? Again, personally, I don't think we needed a forensic audit. I recommended a forensic audit just to get things moving forward. The software eventually will have some change, but then now we're going to get to the money. It goes back to that are we willing to change? Are we willing to talk to the village and say, hey, we short on the general fund side, we're going to borrow X amount of dollars or get X amount of dollars from the water fund? So it's good to want to do the changes. It's needed, but are we willing to pay for it? Um, the forensic audit, I'm willing to say, they're going to come back and say the same thing I've been saying, same thing Miller Cooper has been saying. There's a lot of moving parts within our software system that it shouldn't happen. Um, one of the things I do know that they're looking at is to see who all have had access to the system in the back end, you know, to trace to see what individuals was in the system. So it, it's a software that can do for us some um, upgrading. It definitely is. The updated software that we're using is more costly than the cost of updating the software so that going forward we would have these kind of concerns because a forensic audit implies basically honestly in my opinion a forensic audit implies that somebody is taking money that has not been approved by the uh, body and that money has been put somewhere and they're not they're not interested in these people doing that so they call the forensic audit now the problem I have with that is that the forensic audit itself has no time limit on it. Is that correct, sir? It has a time limit. When you say no time limit, what you mean? I mean, it could, it could take a year, it could take two years. Yeah, once they decide when they get to a point, that's when they stop. It's not like they can come in and say, we're going to go from August to December, and December 31st, we're done. They're going to stop once they get done with their scope of work. And their scope of work is to identify all the discrepancies. So, sir, during the period that we're under the scope of a forensic audit, can we go out and get a bond or are we on hold? Everything's on hold right now, yeah. including the regular audit. So, that costs us money. Or at least it puts us behind our timetable for infrastructure, features like the people concerned with the lights and the, and the fire hydrants and the streets, things of that nature, because we can't go out and get a bond until this forensic audit is done. Is that correct, sir? Yes and no. Let me explain. The audit not going to get done until the forensic audit gets done. Because if an audit is not going to be done, you can't complete the data. You don't need to complete, which is a government accountability trans. Transparency Act. If you don't complete the data, you can't get grants to do the things you just mentioned. So it has a twofold effect. Even if you don't want to get the bonds, you can't go apply it. Let's say the fire department find a grant for trucks, fire trucks, fire engines, I think that's what we call it, right in terminology. He will not be able to apply for a fire engine grant because the 2019 audit is not done, which we, we have we, the finance department, have reported to the state to say how the audit is done. So all this is tied together. So once the forensic is done, the audit can be done. Now it can be done in term that they're no longer charging the village, but it won't be done in term that they are willing to publish, ready to publish it for review where they come in and they talk to the body about their findings and things of that nature. 
So either way it goes, until that audit gets published, we're not going to get any grants or anything. And so, God forbid that I would live in a house that has a fire hydrant that's broken, and I have to rely on the water truck to come, mm -hmm. which is giving my house a chance to burn down or my family a chance to, to die. Whatever, God forbid that that would ever happen, but this forensic audit seems to be a stifle for the village. And as a, as a former engineer in the Chicago Water Department, I know for a fact that we could prepare these fire hydrants for, for less than the amount that I've been hearing because I did it myself. And the cost of doing that ran about $2,500 to $3,500 depending on what we actually had to do with that fire hydrant. Now, if, if we're able to go into the water fund to pay bills, would you consider the need for the safety of the residents of this village to be important enough to also allocate funds to repair more than at least seven? This is a large village. It may not seem so to some people, but to have 67 unworkable fire hydrants is a hazard to the health and safety of the entire village. Well, one, one of the things that I, I do agree with you as far as the waterfront, and as um, Trustee Grove said, we are working on that with the $100,000 per 17 fire hydrant. There is a proposal, and again, this is where I think collaboration comes in, and I disagree with somehow it has been done in the past. One of the proposals that was proposed by one of the trustees was to have our current public work guys who have experience to do it, but do it after 3.30. That way it wouldn't interfere with their day-to-day -day tasks. Based on that analysis, for $100,000, you roughly was going to be able to get 60, let me take that back. It was like in a 30-week period for $100,000, they could do more than 17 fire hydrants. And that's if you take 17 fire hydrants and stretch it all over 13 weeks. I'm under the notion, I'm not an engineer, I don't get into that profession, that for 30 weeks of overtime pay, you probably can get 35 to repair or replace if you do one a week. I don't know how long it takes to do one, I don't know how before you gotta go down or none of that. That's one of the proposals. Um, I've heard about fire hydrants and branches and all this lights and stuff since 2015. My suggestion that I would propose is we say we're going to spend $300,000, let's say. This is what we want to happen. $100,000 go to fix fire hydrant, as the young lady said earlier, is part of your job. So let's get it done. Then you have another $200,000 Um, it's just almost to me, it's a matter of will, you know, being an innovator, doing things differently. You heard me say last time, um, and unfortunately, um, I think it made a few people upset. I'm, I can sit here and proudly say I'm proud of my public works guys. I know the work they put in, I know the commitment. And I'm saying these guys don't do it, but I take offense when I hear last night that we have to get permission to go to the first street fire hydrants. My mom didn't, I didn't ask my mom for permission to wash dishes. She just told me to get them done. That's how I was raised. That's how the realtor taught me. You get the job done. So if the residents want it done, you guys got to let the official hold them. I mean what I said last month. I feel sorry for y'all. Because the lady said $6,000 a lot. I'm pretty sure everybody feel their child, their mother, their father, if they did, is worth more than $6,000 because a funeral is going to cost more than that. It's to be unexcusable that you have the same problem, whether it be a county, fire uh, hydrants, street lights, potholes, that under several administrations continues. I made a point, probably so, we got $1.2 million in the bank account. If you spit it down to 700000 you tell me you guys can't do nothing with $500,000? I'm 
Um, I got challenged, let me, let me say this part, on Facebook, somebody, I hope when she was here, J.C. Bill and uh, Samuel Todd, comment that if Mr. Finch was so concerned about the residents, he'd do something about it. I did. I, I went and got bids for certain streets in the village. I got bids for turn off on water meters. I got pushback. I was told the union will file agreements. That doesn't make sense to me. So I've done my part. I can't do more than put in the budget. I can't do more than call people that I know that can do the work and get it done. It's on you guys. That's what this is about. The will of the people. You know, I said it before, I work for the residents. So it doesn't matter. I go to home to Crete. I know exactly what I'm going to do in my neighborhood. I can tell you at 10 30 night, let there be loud music. I don't have to call a soul. I can tell you if I hit a pothole in Crete, it's going to be fixed. That's what you guys have to do. So I think as we were talking with Trustee Brewer, Sheriff sure Love, you're going to have to have that serious conversation and say, this is what I want done. Go get a plan and let's execute it and make it happen. And if we can't execute it, why not? Everybody should be held accountable to do their job and do their job on a certain level. And it starts, like I said, with the finance team. I know I'm leaving, but I still put a challenge to them. Let's get 1.5 million. Pat yourself on the back in a few months and say, we got something in the bank account that wasn't there last year, wasn't there the year before, wasn't there when Mr. French was here. Why can't we do the same thing? I talked to a trustee last night, and you mentioned about fire hydro. I made a gentleman bet. I said, I guarantee you, between 9 and 7, you might get too fire hydro fixed. Mm -hmm. That's just one of my take on it, because I've seen what can and cannot be done. Thank you, sir. One more point, and, and I'll be semi-satisfied. Because I won't be until I know that the residents are put first. Some of our, our trustees, I, I'm not going to point anybody out because I know it can be difficult dealing with different personalities and, and people got different needs and wants and desires up there. Sometimes the egos get in the way. But we pay calls for it as residents. I haven't heard in one meeting a discussion about repairing fire hydrants or allocating funds to do so. But I've heard quickly how much money we need to get at lawyer. You know, we give this man twenty and thirty thousand dollars a month, and we can't fix the damn fire hydrant. I'm sorry for my language, but it upsets me. I can take it. Uh, it upsets me when I when I sit here, knowing that the people that I elected to serve my interests sit up there like they're my boss, and they don't talk to me; they talk at me about my money. It's not right. And they need to change those attitudes and start working for the people that they were duly elected to serve and be servants instead of sitting up there acting like they dictators and doing things the way they want to do it. Because we have to, I'm going to be honest with you, since this new board of trustees has set up there, I don't see a darn thing that's happening for the residents of the village. It's been back and forth, back and forth. And it, Mayor about the way they want things done. People get fired in and out of that front office. That costs us money. That costs us money. Our money is, is being wasted. And the only person that's benefiting from it is that lawyer. Yeah. That's got to change. And that's, that's all I got for tonight. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm going to piggyback on what you said. You got a question? Yes. But look, go ahead. I got it right back here. Go ahead. There you go. Mr. Finch. Uh, Thank you. I sat here for two years at the board meeting and heard uh, one of the trustees talk about it was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Uh, is that what caused this forensic audit to happen? And did that ever get, or did that ever get uh, uh, dealt with? And did we ever find out was it true that that money was uh, so-called missing or not accounted for? The 
250,000 was part of the forensic audit. That, along with the Osmond grant, um, was the main two issues. The 250,000 was tracked down and did track it down and account, and account for it. And I've said it probably three or four times since I've been here. What happened was um, there was a bond payment due in December, but there was no money to pay it. The money was moved out of the TIF account. It's typically, you don't touch the TIF account unless it's TIF eligible or expensive. There's like a guideline of what can be paid from a TIF account, and mainly things within the TIF district. That money was taken out of the TIF account and used to pay for the bond. Every December, Amalgamated Bank, which is one of our banks that we use that holds most of the bonds funding, give us back, give the village back um, administrative fee. That administrative fee is roughly around $225,000, $250,000. It has happened for years, every year that I could go back and trace. That money came to the village roughly two or three days after the money that was removed from the TIF fund to pay for the bond. Once that money was sent from Amalgamated to our general account, it went from a general account to the TIF account. So within maybe a week, let's say, the TIF account was made whole again. So the money was not taken. It was used to pay a bond that, like your car note, your mortgage, if you default on it, they potentially come knocking. Um, so that was one issue. The other issue, um, which we ended up paying, was the Osmond grant. That grant was provided to the village. Those funds were put into the general account and spent, which is what I said earlier about the CN Railroad account. Right now, we don't need to put that money in the general account just to close it out because it might inadvertently be spent. So with the Osmond grant put into the general account and not a separate account by itself, it was spent. When the state came and asked, one, where's the parts that you guys supposed to repair and I mean do, there was no parts. Then the state came and said, well, give us the money back. Well, the village didn't have the money to give back. We since paid that money back last summer. So those are the two main issues that drove the um, forensic audit. But they have been, you know, identified correctly. Any other questions? Yeah, of course. Yes. I have a question. Uh, back when you were talking about the forensic audit, you made a statement, and I think you should emphasize on that particular statement, you did recommend a forensic audit. You brought that up. Would you clarify that for Mr. Sack? Yes. I, I said that uh, last month, I did recommend a forensic audit. It wasn't the trustees. It was a lot of residents asking that we should, and you recommended it. That's number one. Thank you. Number two, on the water bills and the things that are going out right now and when they come due, we haven't been paying uh, a late fee. Will that change anytime soon so that the people that are, uh, the water bills might be late, is that going to be changing anytime soon? I, I don't think so. That's going to be a call uh, with the finance director and the assistant finance director. But as of right now, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but with regards to the forensic audit, one trustee did mention that they wanted a forensic audit. She spoke very uh, uh, forcefully that she wanted a forensic audit. So I did recommend it because I think at a point we were just going around and around. Um, I recommended it and also, I, and also I told the trustees I don't think we needed it. But if it was to keep the peace and make sure everything was um, even killed, then let's do it. Because I do think when, I don't think it's bad for new individuals coming in, in the organization and not understanding what they're getting into. Like for me, when I got here, I took the time to go through the audits for previous years to know what I was dealing with. With the new financial director, I've asked her to go through the audits and see what she's dealing with. Because, like I said, numerous times, it doesn't matter to me what happened in 2017. My name not on no piece of paper. So I had to know what was going on, and I was using the current auditor's report to tell me that. So I, I, it's not an issue. Um, do the board have a right to feel comfortable with finances? I just think for me at that time, the debate and discussion was we couldn't touch the water fund and use extra money that we didn't have. Because if you recall, 
I said, and the people ran with it. We're like, oh, we got it now. Because it was like, I think we were like $5 million in a hole in the general fund, and people just ran with that. Well, that's one of the reasons. You keep spending money that you don't have, you're going to have a hole. Um, trustee, I want to say the first name. One of the trustees mentioned it in our recent budget about the hole in the finance, I mean, the general fund. The only way you're going to plug a hole or fix a hole in the general fund is cut the expenses in the general fund. Otherwise, unfortunately, Ms. Washington, we're going to have to borrow $400,000, which this year was a lot less than the previous years. Any other questions? I, I am not quite finished. Yes, also, uh, just so that Mr. Sapp is aware, we have been asking and asking and asking to get fire hydrants repaired years go back but we would stand up here and ask for our fire hydrants to be repaired at one point in time i was on a committee with the mayor's wife and we discussed it back then and we're still over the years having issues with getting fire hydrants fixed another issue all these homes that are not paying a water bill and there are numerous homes and there is a home that I'm aware of, and you're aware of, that didn't pay a water bill for a year and a half. Are we going to recover any of that money because he was allowed to live in that house for a year and a half, never paid a water bill, getting free garbage picked up? How many other homes in our village are being allowed to do that? And, and I think, and again, that goes back to working as a group. Uh, to your point and Mr. Sapp's point, why not have the man that the body bring to you all, pick a number, 30 addresses of broken fire hydrants. Bring in the people that can do the work, and I know they want me to say it, but the public works director, and say, how do we get this done? What you're gonna hear first year is, there's not enough manpower. Okay, fine. Then let's give you guys overtime, because overtime, Believe it or not, it will be cheaper than you hiring somebody out. So if you give them overtime and they know how to do the job, everybody's winning. They get a bigger paycheck, the rest are not safe, and financially, as people in the finance department, we pay less money. So it's a win-win. But until the board and the residents demand that, you're going to repeat the same thing over and over, like I said last month. It's like a pig. You can wash it, but it's going to get right back dirty. That, that's what boggles my mind. Why are we doing the same thing over and over and over? You know, they say that's insanity. You guys have been doing this for years. So the man that the trustees bring you, let me, let me go back. When I did this committee meeting, this meeting, I got a lot of pushback. Why am I doing, just had one last night, big blow up. Why am I doing this, why am I doing that? But I'm like, you guys should have meetings. Y'all sit on the committee, have meetings every month. I ask, take the political side out of it, run on your committee. What have your committee done for the residents? Use that as a benchmark. So challenge your trustee, challenge the mayor, and say, we want 25 hydrants fixed. How are you gonna get it done? Don't tell me I need an RFP. Don't <coughs> tell me I'm gonna call the attorney. Tell me how you gonna get it done. Use what I said. I'm like uh, Lindsey Graham now. Use my word. Mr. Fitz, there's a million dollars in the water count. There's a $500,000 line of credit. There's an $800,000 CD. <coughs> you can't tell me you guys don't have money. If the finance director and the assistant finance director and the rest of the ladies at the front window are aggressive and the public works are aggressive and cutting off water, more money coming in. So what's the problem? The problem is it's not being demanded that the people that can do the work do the work. Now, Lights, that could be a comment issue, that could be a village light, that could be a, 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 a state light pole. There's different factors in there. But somebody, the trustee said they want to work together, mm -hmm. one trustee, you go get all the data to figure out these, because let me kind of explain to my kids. Before you get to 10, you got to start with one. This village, don't start. That's the problem. <laughs> so, you have to the trustee. They all want to help. Ask the question next week. Which one of you trustees want to come and give us a list of the most um, dangerous fire hydrants in the village? 
And what is your plan to get it done? Because this is another thing that I do know. There's companies out there. You said you're an engineer, sir. If you was to pick up a phone and call to come say, how long would it take you to repair or replace a broken a fire hydrant completely from start to finish? That's your gauge. If you say two days, okay, he said two days. He's a professional, he's a consultant. Then let's give my guys, our guys, three days. Well, if I do three days over, if I could take three days over a 10-day work period, that's how many they got done. That's three in two weeks. In a month, you got six done. Because the professional who are there are two, said they can get it done, paid them overtime. But this thing, having to get permission from the union store, that, 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 I, I don't understand that concept. When you got to, you, you said to yourself, Ms. Cal, it's part of your job. So, unlike the lady at the front, they can't get overtime, but everybody else can get overtime. So, demand it, hold them accountable, because like I said last night, I don't think you guys gonna have any fix between now and December. Mr. Finch? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, to talk about this fire hydrant thing, because I have worked tirelessly just to get these fire hydrants done. Now, uh, as you know, there's an RFP uh, that uh, she was thinking that uh, Robinson Engineering has, and we should get it next two weeks or so. Uh, but we have been trying for the longest, and you know, these are years, this is not recently to get the fire hydrant. So hopefully we get the RFP done so we know which fire hydrants that we're gonna work on first. Uh, but I wanna get back to that, but I wanna ask you a few things while I got the floor. Uh, uh, when, um, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but she did bank reconciliations. I was in there showing the love and stuff. At that time, we, uh, uh, we talked about this, that civics is not user-friendly, user okay? Therefore, we, that's why we had to get all those copies of those bank recs and make sure they match up and stuff. And it's still not user friendly. You know, I, I spent all day in there just get rid of my report, you know, and stuff like that. That's money I think we should spend on getting an updated computer system, something that's more user friendly for not only trustees, but department heads and also, you know, officials. And But that's something that we never got done. Another thing that um, I I think it's a good idea to make it sure, to make it clear to residents that as we uh, take money from the water fund that, that, that residents should know that that money may be used for something other than water related items. That has never been explained to the residents. So we move the money here, move the money there, but and then the next thing you know, you have a fire hydrant that's not working. That's not sitting well with a, with a, a resident, and that's been going on for 20, 30 years or so. So I'm really surprised this year that we actually going to get some work done. Well, it hasn't been done yet, but we're going to get some work done with fire hydrants. That's because we were so, uh, what should I say, gun ho about getting them done. So, I mean, we, I have done my part. Only thing I have to do is just wait for um, Robinson Engineer, which I think, um, as you know, we had that discussion, but we don't want to talk about what happened with that. But, but Go ahead. Uh, and another thing that you talked about is that you said we couldn't get bonds because of the, I mean, uh, grants because of the bond situation. No. Um, uh, well, 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 let me finish this statement first. It, I know for a fact that we got two MFT bond, two grants, uh, I think with 115000 apiece, and we just got those like in May and uh, August or something. And it's for a specific project, but we, we are getting grant money, so uh, I just want you to clear up uh, that. But to go back to say that challenging us for uh, to make sure that fire hydrant is done, that's a work in progress right now. So, I mean, we have we are getting some things, well, soon, next month. So, I always thought we should have got it a long time ago. But, you know, we have put our due diligence in getting this stuff. We didn't get the paperwork in order for us to do what we had to do. But I'm just saying that, you know, uh, this has been a 20 year problem in the making. And, of course, it's a health and safety issue along with a lot of other things. 
and nobody was giving us any information in order to get these things done. How can how can you have in, in other words looking like this? You can't have um, infrastructure repair unless you get some money. Now it, it doesn't make any sense. We got that nine hundred forty three thousand dollars they said that was coming, but you know we didn't get that. It's supposed to be like five hundred thousand for the five hundred report uh, five hundred repairs from the state. Never got that. So why would you have a meeting for that? You know you're not going to get anything fixed. If you had came up with hundred thousand dollars, we would have got that fixed. So why are we having all these meetings for infrastructure, well, fire hydrants in particular, fixed when we know we don't have any money and not going to get any money? Well, let me let me ask this to uh, what you're saying, trustee. And this this is the part about being innovative. Mm -hmm. You have a hundred thousand dollars, and you say you're going to wrap this engineer. My well, I didn't say it. Somebody else said it too. Okay, yeah. Robert Engineers is doing a bid and whatever. Yeah. But my challenge is, why can't we use that hundred thousand dollars in house? You get more bang for your buck. If if like my my wife called me fuel. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between you know, fuel and cheap. Because mm -hmm. cheap means you don't work with quality. Mm -hmm. If we only got X amount of dollars to work with, to your point, mm -hmm. been twenty years in the making. Why not figure out the maximum way to spend this hundred thousand dollars? Well, that was the mayor's suggestion. They, because uh, I was going well, to do. Wait, I was, you gave me three different. Wait, uh, let, let me go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. The mayor suggested that mm -hmm. because it's over twenty thousand dollars. If it's twenty thousand dollars, you have to put it out to bid. Mm -hmm. And but three bids. It was huh? never brought that I know of to the mayor to look at alternative. This is one of the conversations that I think. Before it came out here to the mm -hmm. residents mm -hmm. to say we have a hundred thousand dollars and this is what we want to do, there's a discussion among the individuals to figure it out. Like, if we want to fix fire hydrant, finance, like you, like you just said, I gave you three companies a call and get a call. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fitz, what can we spend a hundred thousand dollars on? And let's figure that out before we go out to be it. Get it done in house. Like I said, why can't our guys? Do it and do overtime. That's to me a win-win. Most people want to make extra money, but if that's never for, for, for proposed to them. Then yes, you want to spend money and get less work done. Two, the MFT. I can't explain why the village hasn't used the MFT fund to do a lot of work that you said has not been done. Because mm -hmm. that money comes every month. Yeah. So it's there, but again, there's no plan of action. You know, just like the general who asked me on Facebook, I told him, I said, you want me to give you a plan of action? Come to the body and tell him to make me a consultant. Mm -hmm. I can give you a plan of action and how to get this done and how to execute it. Mm -hmm. And I would do it if I get it done and what I save you compared to what you're about to spend, pay me the difference. Uh, that's okay. it. So that's the challenge when I say you guys been working on it, yes, but it's only, let's do it this way. This way is not always the only way, or even the best way. Mm -hmm. So you got a hundred thousand dollars, get more than seventeen fire hydrant fix. Mm -hmm. You got a hundred some thousand dollars in a um, CNN fund. Get some houses boarded up. Mm -hmm. You Don't got work, trees cut. You got workers to do it. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying, make it work. Okay. Well, let me ask. You, well, let me tell you. Uh, I. The people from the state that, that monitor the MFT funds, they they say they have like $1.8 million in that fund. I know that's not true, but the audit that should have been done does not have a lot of closeout letters, so we really don't know what the bottom line is. And I think that we might have a few extra bucks in there, because you know, because most of it is general maintenance. But I'm saying that if we don't know how much money we got. We don't know how much money to ask for, you know, therefore we can't get the information from you or whoever, you know. So at what point do you, do we, um, well, say, okay, I want this, I want that, and then next thing you know, oh, we don't have any money, the money's been gone. So, because we really don't know what's in there, you know, like the MFT you fund. You the cash report every two weeks. I, that's what you give me. I'm talking about what the state gave me. I, the state tells me I got one point eight million dollars. I know it's not true. Let, let, let me explain something to, to you. Mm. Mm. If my wife getting a bonus in December, she don't spend it now. She spends it when it hits our bank account in December. 
Don't worry about what the state may or may not give you. Go with what you have cash in hand. Her cash is king. So if I'm telling you you got $542,000, then I'm saying go sit with your department head, the, the public works director, and say how much of this do you have already allocated? Because that's what we did. Back, back to the budget. Mm -hmm. Who knows how much you want to spend on certain MFT related expenses? Mm -hmm. Then you take that number, okay, this is what I got left over. So let's say hypothetically he said it's $50,000. Mm -hmm. Then you can say, okay, you got $50,000 left over. Finance director, how much do we get every month? Mm -hmm. She probably would say twenty to thirty thousand no. dollars. Then you can say, you know what? I'm not gonna touch the fifty that's left over. I'm just gonna spend twenty thousand that we normally get every month. That's a start here mm -hmm. on something small, but gradually build. But if you're not having that conversation, but you don't know. I am. I'm having the conversation. That's what I'm, I'm but telling you. Me right I, there. I, I, oh, I'm not going okay. to allocate the funds. Okay. But I do think is that. Let's think of a, a, a way to maximize this money. Mm -hmm. I, go, I still go back to the $1.2 million. Mm -hmm. No one has, you and I talked last night, and I said this. I said, well, it was approved to give people wish lists. Mm -hmm. It was brought up that certain people didn't get their wish lists. The first thing I said to you, why was the wish list given when you said to me, you had all these personal issues with the village that need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. No employee should got a wish list if you ain't got the stuff over here fixed. It's, <coughs> it, it blows my mind that if my house ain't together, I'm gonna go buy a brand new car. Fix my house first. Yeah, That's the mindset that has to change. Oh, okay. Everybody got what they want because they, they individual silos. But again, it's a resident that's losing out. <coughs> you gotta not, you, it's the same old broken record. This been going on, this been going on, this been going on. When do you fix it? That's all I'm saying. Well, that's that's my attempt to fix it, you know, because I'm finding out where the money is and, and we're making progress and getting some things fixed. I mean, uh, that's what trustees do. You know, we're getting the money in and we're fixing it. So, um, I don't know. Any, any other questions? I have one. I didn't know this was a rebuttal. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's what it came to. I was here. I think Ms. Couch maybe thought she was, you know, educating me on how this works. I know how it works, but thank you anyway. I, I was here when the question was raised about the $250,000 and the allegation was made as to who took it. And even implied that they put in a personal fund. So after going back and forth, it was a man. The man didn't steal nothing. He's not a thief. He's not. And they know it too. But they're playing politics with our lives. You can tell me it's raining while you're pissing on my head all you want to know the difference, okay? I ain't trying to hear none of that. I'm trying to get some resolve here because my life is at stake. And so is the other citizens here. So after that argument went back and forth for so long, then you suggested that we do a forensic audit. But they still had to agree on whether that's what they wanted to do. And as a matter of fact, Ms. Green, you were one of the main ones with the accusations. I'm going to go and put that out there because I was here. Okay? I don't hold her responsible for the fire hydrants. I think she's a fine lady. She's just not doing her job. Uh, did you okay. say it was me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But I'm All right. talking yeah. to you. I'm talking to you, sir. Okay, so she need to put that mic down right now. And be respectful. Because when they no, call I, my name, I didn't say a word. Uh -uh. I didn't know you, I just wanted to make sure you talk my name. I'm talking to Hold on just one second. Hold on, just one second. We've been here almost two hours. And I'm just anxious to see if you have any more finance information you want to bring because it is getting into a back well, let, let me, so let's that's what I wanted to find out. We're okay, let Mr. Larry finish his point and I say what I want to okay, say. We're not gonna, I don't want this back and forth and because now it's being it's, it, it's getting disrespectful. Yes sir. So, I, I apologize. So, so I just want to make sure that this was for a reason not to sit here and, and air off or whatever go back and forth and point fingers and stuff. <coughs> we're trying to hear facts. So if that's going to happen then I'm going to say, hey, we're going to have to go. But I'm hoping that we can still can get some facts, some facts that's going to help us move the village forward financially and find out where we're at financially. That's why I thought this was going to be. 
But if it's going to go to a back and forth session, then we're going to cut that. Yes, sir. And again, I apologize, ma'am, to you too, Ms. County, for I offended you. Mm -hmm. Anyway, my point is this. It doesn't matter who did that. I don't care about who ordered the forensic on it. It stifled us. Or maybe, maybe we did get a grant or two. But I don't know that if you can find money in that budget to continually pay an attorney for doing something basically he should have been doing for free like four years, you can find money to make me safe in my own home. I don't, I don't care about all the ins and outs about how these fire hydrants came to be broken. They're probably dry right now. They've been out in the disrepair for so long. For so many years, excuses is only making the matter worse. But I'm concerned with, and I don't care who's responsible for it, but I know that my current trustees has the ability to come together and take some money from one fund, get some fire arches done. We're in October, and we're still talking about we're going to do it. We only got a month and a half before this year is up officially. I don't see it getting done. And so don't think I'm the kind of person that you can just tell me anything when I can see. I don't go on what I hear, I go on what I see. The action, the feet work, the footwork has to match the words in order for it to be true with me. If you're telling me your head is south but your feet are pointing north, there's a lie being told or a deception made. What I'm concerned with for my family and for my neighbors, because we're all family here in the village, and even these trustees living in the village should be just as concerned about our safety and welfare as we are. You're charged with that responsibility. Find the money, fix these fire hydrants, and get rid of the excuses to do it. We need to be secure in our own home. We don't need to be caught sleep at night. And some God forbid it happens to start burning and they get there and there's no water. Well, I think um, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I, the challenge that I have is my uh, aggressive tone. I'm not the village administrator here. Um, and I've been told that I could have been a village administrator here, but I chose not to. So let me put that on, on, on record. But I do think that I'm not one for excuses. Military teachers, everybody have excuses. They like buttholes. Everybody have one. I just, it, for me, I'm frustrated because I hear it all the time. It's action, getting results done. Again, I'm going to say, why can't we pay the people that got the experience that's already employed in the village, just go out and do 10, big 10? I said it last night. I, I don't think the contractors are going to come in and do it. Why are you paying extra money? So if one hand we don't have money, but we're taking out of the water fund, there's a way to do it cheaper. In my role as a finance director, even in my role as a village administrator in Linwood, I'll find the best way to get it done and still produce the best results. That's what I'm challenging the residents, the mayor, and the board to figure out the best solution. To your point, that's how I am. I don't care less about the past. I don't care less about the political party. Run on your merits. If, if you're going to play politics, I, and I, I think it's a noble thing to be, become a politician, I'll never be because I have to work by trying to be measured with my words. I'm not going to do that. Um, but when you hear that over and over again, and you, or you see the findings in the audit over and over again, you have to ask yourself, why? Who's going to fix it? That's what frustrated me with the conversation we heard earlier with Ryan with Trusted Brewer. I know we are fixing stuff, but it's a process because we went here the last 10 years to mess it up. But until you are really to say, this is what I want done, you hear, it, and it's the political piece of it, so I'm sorry about this. It's the mayor won't let me do it. It's the board won't let me do it. Well, that's not true because everybody have a voice. That's why I asked the question. If you disagree with the ordinance, why did you vote for it? So if I want to be individual, and I say, I put a proposal, 
that is going to cause X, Y, and Z. And everybody else voted down. When you start putting people on spot, it's amazing how when the spotlight on, people change. It's like votes, they're going to scatter. So if you guys, as residents, really want it done, and you feel seventeen dollars to $100,000 is too much money to spend on seventeen, dollars have somebody tell you what alternative do you have. You guys not doing it, have not done it, because there's so much that can be done, and there's no more excuses. I put money in the water account with the rest of the team. That's more than what it was last year. I put an extra $20,000 in the general account that was never there. So there's money. If you said 2500 3000 to fix a uh, uh, fire, well, that $20,000 did not exist. That's six. That wasn't there. That's money that wasn't even accounted for. Not in nobody's budget or nothing. So it's the will. Where, where is the will? So to answer your question, that's my concern. Um, I, I'm, I, I genuinely feel like you guys need it. So, like I said, the gentleman on Facebook asked me what I was doing about it. I tried to tell him. I can't, I, I, I've never been a laborer. I could barely tell you a hammer and a nail to go together. So, but at the same time, we have to decide what we're gonna do, put together a plan, and execute. You guys should come here and say, where are we at? Where are we on this one, where are we on that? I don't think, Everything has to go RSP. I definitely don't think everything has to go to the, the attorneys. Because again, you're spending more money. But collectively, as adults, I'm sure we can talk and figure out how to get this done without doing it. Give you an example. Last summer, uh, I went and got some bids because I heard it ready. I'm renouncing to America three bids for a, a street. Came back $47,000. I was told. We can't also because the grievance will be filed. I'm like, but the resident just said there's major potholes. That baffled my mind. But then here we are a year later, that pothole's still there. Why? It's on you guys. Just, I don't hold the board, I don't hold the mayor, none of them come or oh, oh, fault, fault them. I hold the residents. You guys voted them in to make them do what you think they should be doing. And that getting up there and not talking about the mayor won't do this, the board won't do this. This is what I want, and every week, come and ask them one by one, trustee, are you doing this? Trustee, are you doing that? And you might be surprised if they ain't change. You ask the finance director, do we have money? Trustee Brewer just said we don't have money. I give a report every two weeks. You want a copy of the accounts payable list? Get a copy of the cash report. It shows every money that's in there. And I personally sign off on it saying, as of this day, I attest, this is how much money we have in our bank account. So they say ain't no money, yeah. Because I was at one point in time. I just uh, say how much money you had. I'm not talking about your trustee brewer. I'm just talking to oh, you in general. Trustee brewer. Oh, okay. I just okay. told you how much money So yeah. you guys have to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Finch, I have a question before we wrap this up. Uh, first of all, I hear that we're going to get fire hydrants done, and you have a plan about if the public works can do it, uh, we can get two done a month. We have home. I invested in this community, not once, twice in this community. And I have a home over there, and I'm concerned about my fire hydrants. So how in the world can you tell me that we're going to put in the budget to action plan 17 when there's 67? What are the other 50 people going to do, or 50 uh, of the other residents that have those 50 that are left over? If you can't tell me that you can fix all of the fire hydrants all at the same time, I don't want to do a piecemeal. Well, um, I mean, uh, excuse me, I've been here 38 years, and we're talking about the same things from 38 years ago because people don't want to change. And, Miss Couch, you don't sit on the committee with me. I married the man, I didn't marry the position. Thank you very much. Now, the, um, the, and you can't tell me I can get my fire hydrants and those dead ass trees cut down. I don't want to hear about no piecemeal. Get a bond, get the trustees, get all the financial wizardry that they have, and get it done once and for all. If you got to sink this village to fix sidewalks, fire hydrants, trees, a, a light, then that's what we need to work towards. But you don't go out there and fix two people's fire hydrants a month, and you tell somebody, 
in our lifetime, I may not see my fire hydrant fixed because public works got to go behind the union. I, I'm really upset about that. So let's get it done. Let's think of another way because 17 fire hydrants getting fixed and it's already almost November is not the answer. I, um, I agree with you. That wasn't my um, recommendation. It actually, it wasn't even asked of me what I thought about it. I did provide um, three companies back in the summer to come out and get bids so that we wouldn't have that issue. But at the same time, it's a matter of will. We, we have the money. Um, a lot of things that were discussed last summer was about the water fund. I keep saying it. We got $1.2 million. We did not have $1.2 million last year. So if you want to get a fire hydrant fixed, there's money. Take it out of the water fund. It's water fund, fire hydrant. They kind of go together. That's not, my, that's not my decision. That's why I told the gentleman on Facebook, I'm not the guy to make a decision. I'm just telling you where the money is and what we have and what we don't have. So I think you should get it done, but that's not my call. If again, you want me to get it done, I will more than gladly be your consultant and be your project manager and show you how to get it executed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Can you tell me, we just recently paid off the bond for the Village Hall? Yes. Is that last year? Last, yes. Okay, what was the annual payment on the bond? $636,000. 636000 annually. Yes. So that's a payment we did not have to make this past year. So that saved the village $663,000. No. no. That's what I'm asking. No, it didn't but, save. That money was levied to every, every household or every uh, property owner. Okay. But I mean, we did not have to pay a bond payment. No. Right. So, right. Because the word bond has been tossed about tonight. Okay. I agree that we do need, in order to do some significant changes in the village, we do need a bond. There's, there's no doubt about it. We can't do it on day-to-day -day operations, and we can't do it with the staff that we currently have. Get everything done at one time. All the streets can't get repaired at one time. All the fire hydrants can't get repaired at one time. All the street lights can't get repaired at all at one time. I do agree. The best thing to do is to attack it with a bond. We paid off the major bond we had with the village hall, so that's a great idea, which I think some of us have already talked about. Well, my question to you is the other thing that was talked about a bond. You said we can't get a bond because of the audits arriving. I want to ask you a question. Put the forensic audit to the side. Can we finish the 1819 audit? It's still not done. It's been in the works for five or six months. And there are still a lot of things hanging out from the 1819 audit. So getting the 1819 audit done has absolutely nothing to do with the forensic audit, in my opinion, because the forensic audit is totally separate. We're doing two separate audits at the same time. Yes. So how is the forensic audit holding up the 1819 audit? I know you can't finalize it until the forensic audit from 1718 is done, but is it in a position to have a preliminary presented as final that we can hold on to once the forensic audit is done? Now think about what I just said. What I'm asking you is, are you in a position to finish the 1819 audit right now today not have nothing to do with the forensic audit. Because then we could put a preliminary in place and immediately start working on 1920. But from what I've been told, we are not prepared to finish either audit because our, finance, our finances are not in order. Right. I'm not blaming anybody because no. we know a lot of it has to do with the software and a lot of it has to do with other things. But my question is, are you prepared to do an 1819 preliminary final audit, have you given everything to the auditors, could it be done? Because is a bond the right way to go? More than likely, yes. So to answer, to answer your question, no, and um, I think I was saying that to Mr. Larry earlier, the audit is not done. It, it probably a, a good best 50% done. Now, when I was talking to Mr. Larry, I don't think we should have to go for a bond right now. It's gonna cost a lot to do everything, but that analogy, uh, to get to 10, you have to get to 1. Uh, what I'm saying, let's start with 1. Yes, we can't do all the fire hydrant, all the potholes, all, all the street lights, all the branches. But the problem that I see, we're not starting with neither one of those four. So I'm saying, let's start, at least have some kind of movement with the money that we know we have. And then eventually, with the 2018-19 bond, 
as we get that, I mean, 18, 19 audit, we can apply for different grants and things that's out there. And even getting a bond, the resident has to vote on that. And to the mayor's point, they have to vote that you're going to increase my taxes. Absolutely. So the bond, if you remember, I never, when I was speaking to Mr. Larry, said we should get a bond. I think spend the money we have, get a grant, and if we get to the point where we need more money, then it's incumbent upon the finance team to say, hey, we need X amount of dollars to finish this project. Are we going to take it out of the waterfall? Because I'm a firm believer that with the $1.2 million that we have in that account, if we take $100,000 to $150,000, we can make a dent in either the fire, fire hydrant, the potholes, the branches, or something. And then next year budget, which is just a few months away, do the same process. But that discussion was held. Not That's once, but want. twice or three times. Yes, we do have the money to do it. Yes, we should start doing it now. Absolutely. And no, we cannot afford to wait till we can do it all at one time. Mm -hmm. But That's we do need to get it started. That, that, but my question to you was, if could you finish the 1819 audit if we weren't doing a forensic audit right now? Would we be no, able to fit? No. The, the so let's, let's just put that fallacy to bed. audit does not stop us, the finance team, from doing the regular Thank audit. Thank you. Because I think people think no, that so because we started a forensic audit no. that we're withholding the 1819. That's not true. No. The forensic audit does not stop the work of the 1819 audit. Thank you. The finance team has to provide information to both auditors. Right. What's not going to happen, the forensic, the auditors are not going to sign off right. and give a report to the residents when the audit is complete until the forensic audit is done. But it does not stop us from working on the regular audit as right. well as the forensic audit at the same time. I think residents are under the impression that the forensic audit is holding up the 1819 no. audit and that holding up the 1819 audit so, is what's holding us up from getting bonds or grants. And I just I, wanted to clarify. Even, even if the village goes off for bonds, the likelihood that we're going to get brand new bonds, even with 1819 audit complete, what's the likelihood that's going to happen? Mm -hmm. When the last time the village actually got new bonds? They oh, refinance, re refurbish, so I've, I've got the right term, we basically refinance the recent bonds, but when the last time they got new bonds, maybe 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. So that's, mm -hmm. when you say bond, it's just that word is thrown out there so cavalier. It's not that simple. There's, there's your credit, how you pay your bills, and all this other stuff. But I, I do believe, and you said uh, it was talked about before. I, it was talked about, but then we had to do an RFP. I'm just not saying do an RFP. I'm saying, why can't we make more people work? Like, if crime goes up, do we tell a policeman, don't do extra work? We don't. Put more police on. If more houses burn up, we don't tell the fire department, don't do it. The finance department, somebody asked earlier, what's the issue? And I said, well, we kind of need more staff. Right. Everybody on the staff. I'm not disputing that. That's right. But what I'm saying, let's, as a team, say, on the works, guys, you guys got the experience. I, the, the proposal that came over was, let, 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 let's the two senior public work guys, after 3.30, that's their role for fire hazards. Hire two junior people. So with senior people getting overtime, two lower staff getting the lowest paid on the, uh, based on the contract, you still will pay less than $100,000 to get more than 17 dollars done. Because maybe another week, everybody will be and you cutting grass. So not saying they don't have other stuff to do, but they got water shut off, they got potholes to fix. So the less skill work that needs to be done, the new people, new temporary staff, really do it all the time. They, they call 89 day workers. Put a goal in 90 days, because probably like I said, between now and the end of the year, it's gonna be hard to get some stuff done. But if we put a goal and say between now, let's say start after Halloween. So if we hit fire very hard in the month of November and first week of December, how many fires can we get done? And challenge them. Hey, I don't know if we can do it with the contract, but say, hey, if we do 17 between now and the middle of end of December, we give you guys a bonus. It's still cheaper than $100,000. That's what I'm saying about thinking differently. And that's what people like myself as accountant, 
our mind is wired where we look at solution to figure out the problem and not just say it's a problem because we can't put it under the rug. Like one of the words we were talking with this uh, article the other day, we were talking about the cash account, and, and I inadvertently said plug. That's like cussing the auditor out because they have to account for the money. So that's all I want the board and the residents to say. Let's figure out can we realistically sit down with our public works director, sit down with our two foremen, sit down with the finance team, sit down with the mayor and say, and the village administrator say, can you guys, over time, not regular day, not your day to day stuff, but over time, as if it's a part time job, knock out 17 fire. Because one thing they have that no contract, contractor gonna have, they know the village. They ain't gotta figure out, is it this address or that address? They got parts already, already probably in some of the garages. They know which one, this one worse than that one. So I can knock out this one, because to your point, it might just need some jail or some lube on it to make it work. I need this one. So there's a solution, but we're not having that conversation. That's all I'm saying. Then you spend that money, then let's say, in the meantime, can a couple of you guys, what's the worst you see in the village? Let's get, fix that pothole, because we're about to have a bad money, whatever. There's a lot of options. Um, sir, um, how long How long have you been, you know, work for the village? Uh, October, I started, 18, I started as a treasurer. Uh, middle of February, I became interim finance director, 2018. So, 2018? 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, I'm just trying to make a determination. So, and, and in your opinion, you think that we probably, at best, will get three done at the rate we're going now by the end of the year? If, you, if you're asking me, do I think? Yeah, I'm asking you. Yes. Yeah, because, and, and, and I'm hoping that, that that's just me being skeptical. Because once you do an RFP, they got to go out, they got to submit the bids. Then we gotta come in and have the Robinson engineer open the beds. And then they're gonna start the work. Unless we aggressively, aggressively ask them to knock out these fire hydrants, they're gonna schedule it out. Oh. But then it was brought up last meeting. What what if they open up this one? And they think this is just a simple repair. And they get down and open it up and it's more work. Oh. But the one they're gonna start on tomorrow, they can't start on it because they gotta finish this one. So, so, so the time frame is based on the amount of work that got to be done, which is why I say it's probably it's easier for our guys to do it because there's no overruns. If they got to do it extra tomorrow, that per hour overtime is still cheaper than the 125, 130, 140 that these outside contractors charge us per hour. Wow, so you're saying possibly we won't get 17 fire hydrants done between now and let's say April 6th. April 6th? Yeah. And we have, In other words, we have a bad winter. We'll we probably have we'll probably have new trustees before we'll get new fire. I hope not. I hope, I hope not. so. Uh, well, I, I think what, what happens to to help answer that question, because I'm not the one doing the work, is when the RFPs come in, their scope of work to give you a time frame what how they think it's gonna how long they think it's gonna take them. 17.5. Kind of like our, they come in and say it's going to take us three or four months. And then there's, unfortunately for us, we have delays because of the things that we have not provided. But they, they will give you a gauge, yes. Anyway, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, Coach Diane. What is the benefit of doing the forensic audit only going back one year? To see if anything was done in that particular year? Uh, does it if you ask them, does it really dig into the meat and potato? It, it probably just touch the surface of it. But then now if you go further, you're asking for more costs. That's one of the reasons I think once we get it done, hopefully it's satisfying everybody. Both sides of the equation, it's done, it is what it is. 
And that conversation about the 250 and all those things could finally be laid to rest, that the finance are okay. There's nothing mischievous going on. There's no stealing of funds or anything of that nature. Because I think once that is resolved, then hopefully, collectively, both the board and the mayor, whoever, whoever it is as the board come next April, can move forward on a good plan of action to attack this. Because I'm still an advocate that you speak and for what you have provided and what you have done, and that your efforts and your um, completion to other residents stand on, stand on his own merits. Thank you. Yes, Can I just make one more final comment about the forensic audit? In my opinion, it was never about trying to find out who stole some money. In my opinion, it was about identifying past practices that we've been doing wrong for many, many, many years that our regular auditors have discovered, but that a forensic audit might be able to fine tune. And we did already say that a lot of that has to do with our software, which has been old for a long time, which we've talked about replacing for a long time. But I think right now, until we get caught up with our finances to a point where we could change our software system, you can't change software system the way we are with our finances right now. We need to get to a point where we can comfortably convert to a new system. But I personally was never one that thought that there was anybody stole any money or anything wrong that anybody had done, but residents and board members alike were looking for some identifying factors. We need to stop doing the same thing over and over again every year when it comes to our audits. That's my final statement. Thank and you. I, and I think that's the biggest takeaway. Um, there, there were a few trustees that had issue with improprieties as well as some residents that, that questioned what was going on with the, the finances of the village. So I, I agree with that. That's why I feel like once it's done, however the cars may fall, I think they're going to fall to the side and say nothing was done other than process and procedures not in place. Mm -hmm. That's going to be another charge to call the, the, the body and the mayor to say, are you willing to put process and procedures in place? Yeah. For example, we have um, payroll and accounts payable as one a person. What happens if the forensic audit says you need to have two people and you need to pay them $50,000 a piece? Is the mayor and the body going to be willing to say, okay, or are they going to say, heck no. We only had one person for all these years. Now you're back to the same boat. Those are the decisions we're going to make going forward. Are you going to listen to the expert, or you want to say past practice is what we're going to go in forward? Yes, ma'am. And, and I'll let this be the last I, one. Last comment. Yes. Uh, yes, I was one of those people that uh, pushed for the forensic audit because, as you know, I had a lot of material which I shared with you, and you said it yourself that this is not right. So, as a person who's supposed to be watching the money, yes, I have to get some answers, okay? So, there's there was no question, and I feel comfortable asking where the money was, because money has been moved in and out of here without uh, trustees approval for years. They, that's that's a given, okay? But, but, but wait, wait a minute, I'm not, no, 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 no. let me say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna agree with you, what? money has been moved. Mm -hmm. But if you guys recall, I sat over there for many days and I said, all you have to do is read the audit. I begged the trustees to read the audit. I told the residents to read the audit. Because what I truly believe, the forensic auditor is going to come back and say the same thing Miller Cooper is going to say. The only difference is we pay them more, we pay more, we, we are paying them more probably than we pay Miller Cooper to do a, well, a village audit. Okay, in, in addition to that, as you know, we have a, we have had a lot of turnovers, okay? Mohana's left, Suffin's left, uh, in fact, we had Regal before then. So, I mean, why wouldn't you, I mean, it's common sense to say, well, some, some of this stuff is not right. Uh, given the fact that civics is, not user friendly. Also, we had to come and dig up some material that wasn't, you know, that we had to look at. And and then, you know, we just didn't have the answers. We weren't given the answers. 
Well, let me ask you a question, Huh? Well, and and it's not until you came on board until April of 2019 were we ever given any information. You know, so I'm, I'm giving you kudos for that. No, I, but I'm just that. saying. Well, what I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you is, mm -hmm. what if the friendly auditors don't give you the information that you quote unquote seek? I, I, then what do you do next? I'm, I'm going to look at whatever the forensic guy that gives us that, okay, that's fine. This is what we have. Because they'll give us some information and give us proof that it's there. You know, whatever we're looking for. And that everything is balanced and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I mean, we're going to take uh, what the forensic audit was saying. Okay. But you shouldn't expect uh, trustees, and since we were new, to accept what's there when we knew all these people were coming out, coming in and out. The information was not given to us. So why would we take it? Uh, but anyway, that's my point. But the second thing about the uh, fire hydrant is that you're saying that you want it's your suggestion that we don't do what we normally been doing, go out to RFP with Robinson Engineering, that we should come up with a, uh, another way of doing stuff. What, what, and what I'm suggesting is mm -hmm. the, the trustees said last summer and part of this year to have the finance team cross train. The finance team uh, all, all salary. Ms. Uh, Couch just alluded to about doing their job, otherwise other people are going to do their job. I strongly believe in that. I just got done telling my police department basically the same thing. So I'm saying if that's good for the finance team, who are on salary, who if they work past 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, they get no extra money. I told y'all last month, I'm probably the only person, including the mayor, that can get my sisters to come in on a Saturday. That's free to them. So I'm saying they are charged with cross training, learning everybody's job, which when you ask the auditors, is inappropriate, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> then why can't we take the people whose job is to fix fire hydrants, whose job allows them to get overtime, why can't we ask them to do it? instead of waiting on them to tell us they give us permission. See, my son can't tell me when he come into the house, because that's my house. And if he don't like it, he can get out to the uh, same okay. point. Oh, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. That's the problem that I have with this body. Mm -hmm. They do not hold the same standard for all employees. And like I said, well, the oh, firemen, okay. they wait. can't stop fixing fires, putting out fires. The policemen, they can't stop doing crime, but you can't say, well, they understand. Everybody understand. So I'm saying, if you're going to spend $100,000, there's a better way of spending $100,000 than well, $17,500. Uh, well, you know that the, the union, that the union is, uh, that we have to uh, address the union. No, no, stop, 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 stop. Oh, yes, no, no, yes, we, no, trust you know, the So you telling me, that. you are yeah. telling me, mm -hmm. you have to get permission from the union mm -hmm. for somebody to work overtime? No, they do the fire hydrants. It's not that, is that, is that not your job? That, uh, that's not my job. No, 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 this is my question. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, oh, oh. we're going back to this, mm -hmm. we're going back to the board. Is there anything else that you want to share? I think, yeah, one last question. Okay, okay. Mr. Keep it short, so I can Mr. Benchett, I'll keep this short, I'll keep this brief. Um, first, thank you for taking your time at this meeting and your previous talk with the treasurer. Uh, I think this is very beneficial to residents to hear it from your perspective and the point of view of the finance team. Um, under your tutelage and your direction, I think that's where the information should come from. Um, one other thing, you stated that most of the answers were in the normal annual audit that every municipality must be due by municipal law. Um, can you tell me and everybody else here, how much does it cost a village or a municipality to do a forensic audit and how much does it cost to do a normal audit? That's it. Thank you. The, we 
you know they're paying roughly about sixty-five thousand for the regular audit, depending on how long the forensic audit goes, it could be close to a hundred thousand. So, so at the very least, we're paying both auditors sixty-five thousand apiece. So that's it. So, um, just to, to let you guys know, I don't know if the finance team is going to charge penalties going forward. That's a decision that the mayor, the finance director, and the village administrator needs to make. We are going into the month of the year that um, revenue that comes in are typically real slow. So you, if you look at the agent report, you probably see vendors that's going to go past 30, 40 days past due. That's one of the things um, to Miss Washington asked me how we pay payroll is because you manage monitor cash flow. So if you see vendors um, getting delayed in payment, that's for that reason because typically this time of year money comes in slowly. Um, the other thing it was uh, mentioned, I did get a raise, a retro, let me say that, not a raise, a retro pay that I'm not afraid to put, let the residents know, and it was uh, $10,000. It was regarding the um, position of the treasurer. Um, again, I took this position because I thought it would be maybe two weeks, three months at the most. I didn't know I was going to be here this long um, in the position because I was, when I mentioned it to me, it would pretty much come in and um, swear away payroll the week that I started. Um, with that being said, there's been conversation that that money combined with what I got paid as interim finance director was quote unquote kind of double dipping or going uh, over budget. I did an analysis yesterday. Myself, the previous finance director, both previous finance director and myself, collectively, again, verifiable, made less than what was allocated for the just the finance director position. So think about that. Myself, as a treasurer, as an interim finance director, Previous to me as a treasurer and the previous finance director. So, what's that five different position made less than what was allocated in the FY19 budget? Those are the conversations that I dislike when it's implied. So, if it comes out on social media or whatever, there you have it. I told you what's actually going on. It's verifiable. Uh, I've never been one to disagree with what one person should make. Yes, ma'am. Would you mind, for the record, letting people know how you knew you were you were actually entitled to that ten thousand? Sure. <laughs> just, just for the record. I had, as I said, I talked to a lot of trustees outside of work. Mm -hmm. I met with Trustee Williams on a Saturday about another matter. Mm -hmm. In that conversation, she mentioned to me about my pay. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was brought to my attention. Trustee William brought that to my attention. And then I subsequently processed the paperwork that got um, processed. And that's how I got the money. And I'm glad to see that. that you got it. I, I just don't let my wife know. Oh, that's so <laughs> funny. Just thank you for the record. Hopefully this has been help, uh, helpful. Um, I'm here for you guys. But yes, I think that we think different. Uh, I'm glad to see you guys get a pat on the back. Now fix the fire hydrant. We're working, at it, Mr. Sapp. We're working at it, Mr. Sapp. We're working at it. Miss We're working at it. We're working at it, Mr. Sapp. My family's life is this. So is mine. I live here too. Why do you have all the